Hello and welcome to the special segment called as MC Pro Slex Talk of the Day. I'm your host Nikki Mitchell-Nani and in this segment we bring to you fundamentally strong investment stock ideas. Today's talk of the day is Hindalco Industry. Let's get to know more about the company. It's backed by the Aditya Villa Group. Hindalco stands as a prominent entity in the industry. As of September 30, 2023, the promoter maintained in the substantial 35% stake overall in the company. The company is the largest aluminium company and a major player in copper while the subsidiary novelist is the world largest recycler of aluminium. Let's talk about the performance for the quarter gone by. A couple of highlights there. Well, the September 2023 quarter result met anticipated levels, aligning with that of expectation. Novel is contributing to around 60% to the consolidated revenues and EBITDA surpassed treat estimates in the performance. Throughout the quarter, gross debt remained stable quarter on quarter, analyzing the net debt to EBITDA on a consolidated basis. It stood at around 1.66 times as of September 30, displaying a slight improvement from the levels of 1.73 times recorded on June 30, 2023. Let's understand the investment rationale behind this. A couple of reasons there. Let's address the first one, which is Novelis is expected to witness in improvement in the margins from $519 per tonne to $525 per tonne in March 24. Now, within that space or within that company, auto and aero segment have been doing amazing. And these stocking in the beverage can segment also seems to be largely behind. These are two of the factors which are working in the favor of Novelis, which is the step down subsidiary. The second reason now, Hindalco has hedged in 11% of its volume in India aluminium business at around $2,755 per tonne for the second half of the financial year. Now, LME aluminium prices are likely to remain in the range of $2,100 to $2,300 per tonne. Additionally, the company has hedged in a portion, securing in derivative contracts for 5% of the volumes for FY25 within floor to cap price range of around $2,250 to $2,575 per tonne. Regarding the copper business now, the expected EBITDA run rate for upcoming quarter is expected to fall within the range of 500 to 550 crore compared to a number of 653 crore reported in September 2023 quarter. Structurally, Hindalco is, is dedicated to reducing the cost of coal. The strategic approach includes bidding of uh, coal blocks aimed to bolstering in captive consumption and thereby mitigating the operational cost of the company. Let's also talk about the capex, which is the third reason out there. The guided range for India business for this ongoing financial year stacks anywhere between 4,000 to 4,500 crore. Meanwhile, the capex for Novelis has been marginally reduced to 1.6 to 1.8 billion dollars for the same financial year. Notably, the consolidated capex spent during the first half of the financial year amounted to around 7,000 crore. Let's talk about the outlook of the company. Eight important highlights there. Let's address the first one, which is the volume at Novelis is likely to witness some recovery in the second half of this financial year compared to the first half. Second, the demand for housing is showing some signs of recovery. Third, long-term outlook for CAN's demand is likely to be maintained at a CAGR of 3%. Fourth, on margin front, Novelis is likely to witness cost pass-throughs. Fifth, management expects fixed costs to decrease on higher volumes as CAN destocking is largely completed. Sixth, both in India and Novelis, Hinalco is investing into downstream assets, which essentially are more into value-added products and higher margin profile. Seventh, captive coal mines allocated would help in reducing coal cost structure. And last point, positive on Hindalco and recommend high-risk investor to add and accumulate on decline. That's perhaps the advice coming in from MC Pro. But with this, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in.